I think Scott had to go through like a little growing pains and right. get put on the put in time out. You know I, what I mean? <laughs> think about what you've done. Yeah. I, I wasn't Stop picking it up. I sit down. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was and just what would happen. And if you get that, you're cool. No, um you probably not. No, probably not cool. <laughs> so I <laughs> Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today, we met at Chiba Hut at a show put on by Scotty Dub, and uh, from there, found out he's a singer, songwriter, arranger, and producer who specializes in all kinds of music, but tends to lean a little into the ska and the rock steady and a little bit of island yeah. vibes. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Owns Skunk Tree Productions, also the front man for Default Valentine, and the band with his name on it. Comic book artist with his brothers, and he's representing Mixtape Records. Please welcome yeah. to the channel, Robert Stokes. Hello. I don't think I own, I don't have Skunk Tree Productions, but that's okay. You don't? <laughs> then there's a Robert Stokes out there that does. I don't own anything. Maybe this is a guy from Cleveland. <laughs> I know it's also safe. He moved, he moved here from Cleveland. But I think he looked up the wrong, wrong Robert Stokes. That might be what happened. I'm so sorry. All that's right, okay. There's a, he's probably a cool guy. <laughs> Everything else is right. <laughs> Everything else is good. Yeah, do cool. Well, you know. All right. Um, first of all, thank you for coming on the channel. You're welcome. Second of all, what what prompted the move from Detroit to Vegas? Um, well, I had my daughter, and I got laid off my job, and uh, my parents moved out here when I was in high school still. So it was uh, like uh, you moved in with mom and dad. Yeah, it was a little complicated because we couldn't move in with it. nobody in Detroit would let us move in with them when I lost my job. So it was like, my mom just said to come out here if I can get a job, whatever, I can go back. I just had right. my daughter. This is about 2003, like almost 2004. And then I came out here and I, I got a, I used to do print press operator, like printing press stuff. Been there, done that actually. Yeah. yeah. So I, when I got out of that, when I got here, I thought I'd go into that. But then it's like, being a bus, I went into busing. I was like, "What do they make? Like an hour to be a busser?" Because in Detroit, you make like two fifteen or two fifty an hour. Eesh. You know, so you don't even get a paycheck. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no such thing. I work here for the love of scruffy believes yeah. in this company. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so I moved out here, and I've been here for eighteen years now. Right on. Uh, now you're no longer in a band with your brothers, but you were, right? Uh, no, my brothers were always, they're art, they draw, right? and uh, they've never, my one brother plays guitar a little bit. But weren't you in a band with them, like, way back when? Uh, no, I was in a, <laughs> when I was, like, when we were, like, teenagers, I yeah. guess we, we, no, not really, though. Huh? Like, we played music down in our basement, but that was, <laughs> that's about it. My, my deep... brother never was really a, uh, my brother plays guitar, but he's not, like, He's more uh, an artist. Like he draws. He he's always drawing. My other brother is a writer. Okay. So like I'm the musician, I guess, in a sense. It's. I think I'm gonna have to restructure my deep dive department because. Uh, yeah, you, a lot of wrong you, information. You deep dived on the wrong Robert Stokes. Are you the Robert Stokes that has a diploma and upright bass? No. No. I don't even There's play some, upright bass. <laughs> somebody out there has that, and I swear it was you. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to, guys. Okay, uh, welcome to the interview. Yeah, about Robert interview's Stokes going great. That has Skunk Tree Productions and, <laughs> and, a, and a really good diploma and upright. Oh, yeah, Doc I uh, is I the, uh, barely it, graduated high school, so it, I don't have was dog anything. Okay, were you ever in dog gear? I was in dog gear. Thank you. You're, Finally, you're going over. You're going a good direction. Six piece band. Yeah, the, I don't have much on Spotify. Dog mm -hmm. here is one of the things that actually exists that so, I'm on there. Now, I haven't heard any of Dog Year's music, okay. only because of I forgot to listen. Quite frankly, I, no, I, I, I was like, deal. it's a thing. I wrote it down. I, I forgot to listen. It's so weird because I'm not a lead guitar player whatsoever. Right. How does it compare to the Robert Stokes Band? Or oh, it's totally Valentine? different. Really? It's not even. It's a rock and roll thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you remember the rock? Yes. I don't ever typically remember to rock. So that was a weird thing. I was like, I'm not a lead guitar player, but I mm -hmm. was 
in that to be I was leave yeah. it was my stepbrother and like um uh, this guy Justin that's a amazing singer and uh there was a few other people and it, yeah it was going really good but it's just you know where no. bands go they don't no. really sometimes work out very well the best named band I was ever in I, I actually can't coin the name and I know some it's it's like uh there are other bands that have it as part of their name Revolving Door it was the best name ever okay started as a seven piece yeah. ended up as a four piece went through seven drummers ended up back to drummer number two okay four keyboardists ended up no keyboardists <laughs> it was yeah. revolving door was perfect. Okay, well, yeah, Doctor is really cool. I mean, it was really, it felt like the one thing if I was in, it was like it could have been like universal type of music. Right. It is a name that seems to be almost begging to be like a big thing. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was all but the one guy who was in it was in a, I can't remember his band that he was in, but it he was in a touring band already. So the guy that's the singer, mm-hmm. he's just so good. And I created a like a side project with him. It's called Land of Astronauts. Land of Astronauts. Sounds yeah. Like a comic. So it is a comic. So basically, hey! I did like daily songs for like I did like 136 or something in a row. Right. I made a song a day and recorded oh, it. Oh, you did that and put it up Dang. on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy that was in Dog Year, yeah, he was like, I just wanted to know how I go home and how I make these songs because it just seems it's really prolific what yeah. I was doing it's not like no one I don't know anybody that's really it's not normal no, dude it's not normal <laughs> so uh so I showed him how I do it and he's like oh that's not that hard and then we just started sending music back and forth and then the guy that also the guitar player that was in dog here who was more the rhythm guitar player which doesn't make sense about a lead guitar player right but he we all started working on stuff and then I drew a picture of like us like there was a Rolling Stones image but I drew took it and drew us, and I was like, "Oh, this is a comic." You mean with the lips or a different role? Too? No, it was just them. And he had like, I have like, I drew all myself with like a turtleneck. Photoshop. Yeah, and, and I created a so basically like our EP, which this is also on Spotify, which I don't have anything that's Robert Stokes on Spotify, but Land of Astronauts is on Spotify, and it's basically our. I drew a comic where our band gets abducted and put in an intergalactic battle of the bands. So the CD booklet is actually the comic book, which is really cool. But I know you're familiar with Sheeps of Neptune. I'm not too sure. I mean, oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe not. You I, listen I, to Sheeps of Neptune? Okay. Their 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 lyric, the stuff is is like right out of that. It's like yeah. we we were on, you know, we stole a spaceship and we went to this planet and oh, we yeah. fought robots. And okay, you know, sadly ours isn't like that. Like the songs are very just like yeah. It's really kind of a unique thing because I for forever I've never like really like. I was never the lead singer of anything, mm-hmm. really. I was always just like part of bands. And uh, when I got in, when that happened, I was writing all the songs and he was singing. And I'm like, oh, this is all You're great. Very eh? So good. Because I don't, I don't typically, I don't know. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. I think my voice is okay, but like, what? there's people, there's like, but when I hear other people sing like songs that I write, then I'm like, oh, okay, I like that. Like, yeah. I think it was. I actually, I want to talk to you about your voice. Have you had any actual voice training? No. Where does the warble, the vibrato come from? I don't know. To be honest. You're going to hear it. The only reason I sing is I do improv music. Like, like when I was, when I was a teenager, like they'd have, uh, like our, what is that? The talent show. Okay. In every talent show, I would pick a different subject that I would sing a song about. So like, first one I did was like pooping at school and it was so so bad because it was just like at school they have like little tiny pieces of toilet paper that are like that yeah. big and so like I brought some Don't and at the end of the song I threw them up in the air so I wasn't very I wasn't a good singer at all like I was just more of a I was just more of a comedian you were an entertainer yeah and then uh that's awesome so and I would go to this coffee house like every Tuesday and then it would just turn into me doing improv songs like the whole entire night and it was it would get so weird, you know what I mean? It would be like yeah. the requests. I only remember a handful of them because some of them were so weird. Yeah. Guy said raccoon bacon, so basically I like I hit a raccoon. That's, I was gonna say bacon made from raccoon. Yeah, and I didn't want to leave it there on the road, so I brought it home and turned it into bacon. Like it does. Like my improv is like a very like 
It's like my hidden talent. Yeah. No, no, no wonder you did 146 songs. Yeah, because I can do it. I can write a song like without thinking. That's yeah, actually it's, amazing. Yeah. Raccoon Baby. Wow. I've, yeah. I can always say so, I've never even thought about that. Yeah. I know, I did a comedy show out here a lot where they would have me do it. And I never did. My stepdad talked me into like going and doing this comedy show. And, mm-hmm. and I did it. And it was, it's like, they really loved it. And then I went in like a comedy contest. It's kind of an odd thing that I don't. That I should do, because it's it's rare. Not right. many people can do that. But I just there's something about it that it's like I say the worst things ever. But that's, when I that's it's so awesome. bad. <laughs> I'm like this could come back and haunt me. Like, definitely, definitely stick around to the end of the interview because he does. Uh, he does a, quite. A, he's gonna do quite a few songs tonight and uh, up in room six, and you're gonna hear that vibrato warble yeah. thing. And I'm listening to it. I studied voice for two years. Oh okay. yeah. And and yeah. I was like. Kill for that. That is awesome. That is yeah, awesome. So. I don't really know where it, it comes from, to be honest. Because like I, it took me a long time to even get right. comfortable singing, and then it's my. I was married, and my ex wife sings, and she can sing like anybody. Oh, so maybe you just kind of gleaned it, or, or you know. Yeah. Well, she would always yeah. sing, and I, I always sang, but I was always like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna sing. So go to the bathroom or <laughs> smoke a cigarette because I'm gonna. This is gonna be awful, and. uh that's how I went for so long, and then uh, when I got divorced, mm-hmm. and I mean, all of a sudden I was like in a band, and then the guy had this cr- idea to like start a oldies band, but do all ska reggae versions of everything. So really, the only reason I'm doing like what I'm doing now is because that bass player, right on, in that band. Uh, I'm here to tell you, man, you bring the party every time. No, seriously, you, yeah. you, it, 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 and, and part of it is the whole self-facing thing, but you really just get up, and you're solid, and you put on a, just a quality show without being like, look at me, or, yeah. you know, it, it's it's just always like, in a very good way, yeah. you know what you're getting with Robert Stokes, you know, right. and I mean that in a very good way, <laughs> yeah. in a very like, okay, he oh, he's on the bill, it's going to be solid. Yeah, you well, know? my improv is part of, like, my stage presence is from a comedy standpoint yeah no no so like i know how to kind of like do something that's not maybe not a lot of people do on stage like I'm, maybe that's what yeah. i have said in a review i've done uh which is here i've said i've in a review that that he, he bring a little bit of the uh, bare naked lady's sense of humor and, and also okay. the, a little bit of the look yeah you know and right. but what I, I i just figured out now i think there's also some steve martin in there early okay. steve martin All right. you know just like yeah, I'm, I'm throwing stuff and seeing if it, if it hits. You yeah. Know? Oh no, for sure. I can I can kind of read a little bit yeah. of like a crowd. Also, some, he, he's a when I'm by myself, it works out better. Yeah. When I'm in a band and there's other like like in I'm in Default Valentine, which is basically a cover. It's a Vegas cover band. Right. You know, but we do all reggae versions of stuff. But it's like when when we're both talking, I don't really get to control everything. Right. So it's like sometimes I I can't really make jokes and I can't really like. Oh, so you heard it here first. He's a control freak. Oh no 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 I, I, I'm no! I love. It. <laughs> I'm just. It's just when I'm by myself. It's a, more of a. Yeah. I'm just joshing. Man. I, hey, hey, room six, get a mug. <laughs> They're actually the like best deal on the on the, the website. Oh, right. room six dot shop. Yeah. Um. So, I, I speaking about the singing, I was going to ask how long have you been doing music. And you kind of oh, yeah. answered that already. Yeah. And and you were doing music in Detroit before you even... Yeah, well, I mean, I was... Uh, yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was in, like, sixth grade. I don't okay. know how old I was. Right. My stepdad builds guitars. Oh, well, and, there you go. Some uh, yeah. of you are... So, you know, I was always around guitars. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I wanted to play drums. And then that wasn't going to happen. Right. And then I wanted... Then I was like, oh, I'll play bass. And my brother had an acoustic guitar, and he taught me uh, a Stone Temple Pilot song. I can't think of the name of it. Probably Creep. It was the... Oh, oh, oh. For yesterday. The... No, it was the... <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Oh, uh, the one from The Crow. Yeah. yeah. That's enough. <laughs> Let's not get copyright for that. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, so, and then I just kind of just dived into guitar, and then I got super into ska and punk music, and uh, I would go to shows, like, 
every weekend. I don't know how I... I wish you could see his socks. They are pretty scott. He, he's got the black and white checkered socks I on. Got a little, I got a little two-tone socks. Yes, on. you do. <laughs> he took his shoes off, and I'm like, there it is. There's yeah. the scott. There's it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't wear an exciting shirt. I'm sorry. I, I know, man. I had a Hawaiian shirt ready to change into just, just to... Just, just to be... Oh, yeah. there's a little stuff going on here. Yeah. So, um, all right, we talked about no real vocal training to speak of, just no. whatever comes naturally or what you picked up. Yeah. I want to talk musical influences, because... You didn't start out with ska. You, you, what what was that earliest musical influence that said, I want to do that, whether it was a, an um, artist or a genre or well, a song? Well, no, I mean, uh, I grew up in Detroit, and there's a... Rock City! In, like, sixth grade, uh, my my, uh, my one of my best friends was got a drum set the same year I got a guitar. Hey! And his drum teacher gave him a Suicide Machines CD, okay. which Suicide Machines is, like, ska punk in Detroit. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. And I would just, and then I stopped thinking about, like, I was learning a lot of Smashing Pumpkins when I first started, and mm. I was learning a lot of, like, that, like, you know what I mean? I, I bought, like, the pad for yeah, yeah. Melancholy, or yeah. Melancholy in the, in the Sadness or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. But when I got into punk and ska, it was like, that changed everything. So uh, forever I was just doing, like, I would sit in my room and just play these, like punk ska songs i mean like i'm xpx i don't know just like super dorky <laughs> in my room with like just playing these songs and imagine they're gonna pull me up on stage because all i did was go to shows like since seventh grade i was at a show every weekend so you wanted to be the kid in the audience when dude dave like, Grohl oh, pulls you up on stage. yeah <laughs> let's go let's do this so yeah. I, I i don't know i just really got into ska there's like a band called mg30 it's one of my favorite bands and i saw them so much and it was just I just was so into the ska scene, and uh, the ska scene kind of, I guess, kind of fell apart like 2001, 2002. It totally disappeared for a bit. It did. And uh, when it did, there's a guy named Chris Murray, who's um, my biggest influence. He was in a band called King Apparatus. I don't remember King Apparatus. He was in something else, wasn't he? Um, he's a Chris Murray combo, like, uh, I don't, it, it, no, because he went from King Apparatus to be in uh, Venice Shoreline Chris is what his uh, first thing was that he was doing. Like, Venice Shoreline Chris. Yeah. So, but he's from Chris, Canada. buddy, what do you But playing? he plays <laughs> ska, uh, ska by himself. Like, he plays acoustic he ska. Be, so he's kind of doing what you're doing, only more ska. Oh, well, it was like, that's the only reason, like, I'm doing what I'm doing is because when the ska scene went away, it was like emo took every, everything over. Yeah. It was just a different thing. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, but when I... Would mm. listen to him, I thought, I don't have to stop playing Scott. Like, there's this guy right. playing Scott by himself. So, like, there's no reason for me to do that and give up on it. So, I kind of just always held on to, like, playing Scott and then I can do it by myself. So, I was always a solo Scott performer. That's actually a good lesson for you new musicians out there. Yeah. Play what you want to play. And as you start to get into it, if you suddenly that genre disappears or whatever from the radio or, or from the scene, stick with it. Because it, music, it just comes back around. Yeah. You know, the 80s are coming back. No, no it does. The 90s. Sky and... is having like a little bit of like... Well, like yeah, that, that night at, at Taverna Costera, the yeah. com, uh, uh, Josh Good's birthday. Yeah, Monkey and... Yeah, I yeah, mean... There's a lot of bands doing... I think Sky had to go through like a little growing pains and right. get put on the... Put in time out. You know I what I mean? <laughs> Think sure about is. what you've done. Yeah. I, I wasn't. Stop picking it up. I sit down. <laughs> ah. You know what I mean? It was <laughs> just what would happen. And if you get that, you're cool. No, um, you're probably not. No, probably not. Cool. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I wasn't aware until like last year exactly like ska also has subgenres. Oh yeah. Like you know metal and all these other genres have a lot of subgenres. Right. I didn't know. I thought ska was ska. Yeah. You know, and, that's and, fair. And you know, pop punk was pop punk or pop punk, but yeah. no, there's gradations. Yeah, there's a ton. College word. Look it up, kids. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's all right. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I yeah. mean, not like you need a ska history lesson, but I mean, ska started in Jamaica. Please, in the early, it's learn it was, one. It was influenced by you know like '50s America's music, mm -hmm. and it, like Fats Domino is like one of the big, the big. Really? Actual beginnings is because when you think about that rhythm, yeah, they hear when it's in Jamaica. So Jamaica is really oh, nice. a strange space because yeah. it was like they didn't 
they wanted they would basically throw these parties so that's why you maybe hear sound system a lot mm -hmm. they would have like at they at they would put these huge sound systems out and play records from america and they'd have these big parties and so like they always wanted to have a, a record that the other person didn't have so basically they started recording music like in like the um what is that uh, oh. <laughs> why am i so dumb right now um, um basically like you know how motown had like a house band yeah um so like jamaica had a house band i don't know why i can't it's so dumb that i can't think of it starts with an s and so but they were like basically no a <laughs> yeah no, don't no, i apologize because that shouldn't even be like i should have that on the the top um of my thing but so they would start recording things and they they were all that that beat the up tempo the and up then, uh, yeah the upstroke then so like you know the off time mm -hmm. so and then that became you know and in jamaica they didn't have copyright laws till the 80s hey. so they recorded all those old classic songs like right. if you type in any old song and you type reggae version there's a reggae version of cupid there's a reggae version of fever there's a reggae version of right. everything because they didn't have anything that was stopping them the, they could right. go record the newest Beatles album if they wanted. So it was really crazy. Not a lot of younger people know that Jamaica has a big recording. Like it's kind oh, of yeah. a lot of it's kind of DIY ish compared to mm -hmm. um, you know American and British standards and, and around yeah. the world. But they have they they recording a lot of like dance hall and and just a lot of stuff. Yeah. Well, and in that time period, I think it was the most music that was yeah. being made in the whole. I, I was watching uh, some sort of documentary. Can't remember who it was. Can't remember when or what. You know, but it was. I think it was dance hall. But literally, it was like recorded the song, got a CD that night, played it at a club. Yeah, and exactly. everybody so went nuts. That's what was happening. So in the ska era, that's what it was like. Yeah, happening. And it might have been a tape. Uh, <laughs> it's the ska lights. I'm so there. Don't even know why. I even so, I know that. Name. Yeah. So the ska lights are the original band that was were were the recording hop. Like basically, the ska lights played every like Bob Marley first started the they, ska lights. They're still together, aren't they? Yeah, there's still I mean, different. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's there. different members, of course, and there's. But like, I've there's seen the name here in Vegas. At least yeah, once. they've definitely played. They definitely play around, and I mean, you know, they're still touring. If you're watching Skylights, I'll do a virtual interview with you. Dude, let's go. Yeah. And Monkey, still waiting. Oh shoot! Well, I mean, shout yeah. out. No, well, Josh, yeah. Josh Coots, amazing mixtape yeah. records. He he's he is he has a, he has a list of people that want to bring on the channel. Yeah. And it's just tiny, but now that I got that calendar, it's good. That's right. I went to Get visit yourself a calendar. I went to visit my eighty-seven-year-old mother, and she had this little, you know, it looks like a checkbook calendar. Yeah. And I uh, and I was, you know, my immediate thought is, I got a cell phone, mom. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I do want that calendar. And I brought it the next night to the showcase where there were nineteen performers, and I left there with sixteen interviews lined up because when you see it in writing, yeah. So same thing goes with if you're making any plans or you're you're trying to like set up a gig or whatever yeah no you write I'm it down. already forgetting because i have so many gigs it's so stupid yeah, yeah i don't yeah. even know what write right. it down i actually just today ordered a dry erase mo uh, month okay. uh yeah. calendar that's the word <laughs> I, I just ordered one <laughs> i'm gonna put it above the desk in room stupid. six so that yeah. i can like from, from that little checkbook yeah. i can transfer it just look up yeah. like oh yeah and and because yeah. i have a right now i have a notepad file <laughs> a text file that's just a list of edit this, write this, record this, you know, blah yeah. blah blah, and and it'll be so much easier if I can say, okay, he's coming this day, she's coming that day, he's coming this day, yeah. and and also I can in a double in a different color. This is gonna post this day. This is gonna post that day, and it'll really keep me hopefully st streamline my process and and mm. my workflow. Right. But I digress, this. dude. But, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're but we digress. Yeah. Moving on. Anyways, yeah. So Scott Rocksteady, yeah. the reggae, and then you have like dirty reggae, which is like a like a rougher version of it. It's also called skinhead reggae. <laughs> Excuse me. Then you have like in England when, all, like all the there was like a lot of um, people, you know, coming from Jamaica to li living in in Europe. Right. And so when they brought when they moved to Europe, they brought all their records. And then there's that's where like skinhead reggae comes from, and like the two tone era in England is like blacks and whites making music together. That's why you have checkers. That's what checkers are really actually resemble a today. It's learned. called the two tone. That's why you see checkers is because it's blacks and whites making music together. It's unity. I was today years old. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. That's so awesome. basically like when you see checkers, that's all that's 
like maybe people don't know like or understand where that's coming from, but it's a, right. it's from a two tone era, which is like the specials and like that English is awesome. Man. That, like, I, that yeah. makes me like Scott even more. Yeah. Um, so I mean, in Scott, you know, and when America takes it, it's like a Scott punk. Like third wave is what you know, real big fish and most everything. Right. When people think of Scott, they think of only that because right. they. Well, uh, you're if, unless well, no you doubt unless you yeah. dig, you don't know that it's like right. from the '60s. Like. But again, like I was saying, like yeah. I started finding out, oh, there's all these different types. Yeah, and and more than just slow ska and fast ska. Right. Which, and by the way, you do kind of slower stuff. Mine right? is called my, the era that I dive into the most is rock steady. Rock steady is right, slower steady. than reggae in its love song. Right. It's still danceable. I've it's, seen. I've seen. Yeah. I've seen but, the, the kids dancing. Yeah. Well, the Robert Stokes band is like. Taking all my rock steady songs and making them Scott songs. Right. Well, once you add the drums, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. then you turn them into. You know, it's, the just like, it's just a tempo change. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's just a, it's not even much of a tempo change. It's just playing it fast, like playing the Scott. Faster. Speaking of unity, he said, pointing at his checkered socks. Um, you can't see him. You know, way down here. Can you put him here? No. Just no, I'm good. I'm, the, I'm not as uh, youthful as I used to. I'm not youthful. I thought you were gonna say limber. No, same, I'm same not difference. either. Uh, any same. of those things. But speaking of unity. Uh, what, how has there traditionally been um, a, a divide between punk and ska? I mean, back when I was going to shows, it was like all the ska bands played with the punk bands. Because that's what I've seen at shows is a, yeah. a melange, you know, different yeah. things. But you would still kind of, oh, yeah, okay, you're still a, a version of punk and you're still a version of ska. Yeah. And I was wondering just, you know, was there ever just this us versus them kind of thing? Oh, uh, not really. I mean, ska is a very... Like, if you even go to punk rock bowling, there's always ska bands. Playing. That's true, yeah. Um, so ska is very, like... The third wave ska and that type of stuff is always very... Even traditional ska is very... So would you say we're in third wave now? or? No, we're like... A, we're This is like... A, this is even past that. I think fourth wave was like 2005. We're in the future. Don't worry. I, I'm a dork about all this stuff. But, no, no, uh, this is actually, this yeah. is awesome because you just gave us a lesson that I never knew about. Yeah, no, Scott is like a huge, there's a huge timeline and Ooh. there's a huge arch. And like even in my group that I do covers, mm -hmm. I do every type of, like, I'll do like what you would consider skinhead reggae, which isn't a racist thing. No, 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 no. It, yeah. It's basically working class, like, uh, working class Europeans. Right. would go to those, like, would go to Jamaican, like, parties in Europe. And they would, you know, they dress real, like, it was really strange. That's like, where the soup came from, right? Well, like, that's what you call it, like, a, like, well, rude boys in Jamaica are way different. Basically, like, rude boys would break up the parties and bring rude. guns. And they were, yeah, it was, the rude boys in Jamaica were, like, actual, like, but where does that that icon of ska, the, the ska guy? That guy is from the two tone era, which is the specials, which is like a suit and tie, black and white, like, right? Kind of. You just show up all dapper and then yeah. just start, just start. But it's not well, moshing. It's not really moshing. Yeah, no, you would do more dance. Like the it's toast, more like I'm having a dance good. party of one right yeah. here. <laughs> like English beat. That girl is like the ska icon of the girl. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the guy is the icon of the specials, which are both come from that two tone era. Right on. Because, I mean, if you just Google images, yeah. Ska... You're going to see the specials guy. You're going to no see the what. guy first, and then That's you might see the girl. Specials. You'll see the checkerboard that background, and you'll see, yeah. you know, uh, maybe some band logos. Yeah. yeah so. so, yeah, it's definitely two... Two-tone is what has kind of defined Ska as, like... I don't think you'll ever get rid of checkers, and I don't think you'll ever get rid of, like, what the hopefully, two -tone. Now that I know the history behind it, now, yeah, hopefully yeah. never. No, and yeah. I mean, like, uh, you know, like, Asian Man Records is, like, was... Always an anti-racist. It's like a, it's a it's a ska is typically a very anti-racist, right? right? Like very vocally anti. -racist. I want to believe that m the majority of people know that you know punk and all yeah. punk and also ska has been all for for yeah. tr traditionally yeah. has not been at all associated with the uh, crooked letters. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> for the, sure. With, with, yeah. the, with the bad boys from Germany, yeah. and 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 it has been very much about you know they their songs have brought. Uh, like to social inequality and to oh, yeah. well, all, all the ills of society. So, yeah. My songs are sadly all love songs. Oh, hey, you know what, though? You know what I mean? Like, That's okay. <laughs> I, um, yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah. Let's talk show memories. What is your favorite show memory, whether it 
it was, oh my god, somebody went to jail, or that was a crazy oh, night, or I checked out the rock star moment, or just some, what's your favorite uh, show memory? Well, I don't know. I went to so many shows. Performing. But, oh, me playing? Yes. Tell them I'm going to get some more. <laughs> All right. Well, shoot. I don't know. My favorite... <laughs> my favorite show experience that I've been part of? Yeah. What's your favorite memory of making music at a show? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I more have fun at shows. I mean, I really do love playing music, but I'm like... Is there a show that you were like, I can't uh, believe I was on that bill, or... Yeah. Well, I mean, any of the things. Like, Josh... Has, has always been like to me I've already done everything I wanted to do like okay. Chris Murray is like my favorite and uh, like I mean you got to show the Bill of Monkey that was pretty cool yeah it's Super Monkey like uh, all those bands you know what I mean like and it's really been an odd experience to become right. friends with the people I looked up to because like playing with Chris Murray and now Chris Murray is like kind of my friend you know like we'll right. like talk to each other every now and then and that's huge for me to like to to be part of, to feel like I'm actually like part of like what I was like. Right. Like I never really thought I'd get to this point where. You know, I'm surprised that the Robert Stokes band or just you hasn't like joined on tour with Monkey, with Monkey or somebody. Well, yeah, I think there's some, there's definitely some potential there. I, I work and I have my power and I have my things. She's 18, dude. Yeah, no, things are changing. Get out, get yeah. a job. You know why? Because when I need a job done, I get someone with a job to do that job. What are you saying? No, I'm, I'm definitely like, that is going to go wrong. Things, things seem like they might be changing the Robert Stubbs band is like a huge a thing like when we played at Taverna it's like no one was ready I've been playing very slow rock steady oh, no, no, for no, no. years and years and years you have I, uh, some of you know um, how, how Savar the homegrown show, song showcase I've seen how perform by himself many yeah. many times but I'd never seen him play with his band yeah. until I think the same night Yeah, and suddenly it was just like oh <laughs> It was the same thing with your band. Okay, I think that one, I was so... Right, the, uh, the band... But the before, played. the monkey, the one with monkey Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, two separate nights. But yeah, yeah it was no, the same no response I had where I, Okay, I know yeah. what it's going to sound like, and suddenly, yeah. boom. Oh, no. Yeah. Nobody was ready for... Nobody was ready. Stokes band. You're not ready. Because I do the same thing always, so... Uh -huh. But again, as I said, rock solid. You know, you know what to expect. You're rock steady, buddy. Hey. Hey. Um... Okay, so from favorite show memories, I want to talk about what's your favorite live music venue in Vegas, whether you've played there or just seen music? Um, probably Booking Bowl. A lot of people say that. Yeah, I have just... yet to be inside. Oh man, it's I, well, like uh, my I haven't played there in a long time. Um, oh, the default totally. Valentine hasn't really. <laughs> uh -huh. They're just getting open back, open back up. And right. I wasn't the person. I'm not. I'm. Everybody else books everything. I I let everyone else do all the work, and then Lucky. I just show up. Um, but uh, playing Brooklyn Bowl, the flyers. <laughs> it was, was probably it's probably like the nicest venue in the best sound. Uh, like I've seen pictures, yeah, and it no, looks amazing. And it's I've heard, great. I've heard it's great stories about the, the the green room and the like how yeah. they treat musicians there. Oh, dude, the ch fried chicken is so good. Kella from Dead Money, yeah. you know Kella yeah. from Dead Money? Oh, absolutely. She was on here, and and she said Brooklyn Bowl, and she said. Some of the best fried chicken I've oh ever had. Gosh. Yeah. And, and that you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And, and well, I'm not going to pay that much for fried chicken. And, and her, okay, one of her favorite memories, her favorite show memory is hanging out backstage. So people are, you know, smoking pot. Yeah. And waitress just walks in with a plate of fried chicken, pushes a plate uh, of pot, yeah. and puts it down, just walks away. Totally, like, it's a yeah, Tuesday. It's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, Brooklyn Bowl is great. <laughs> and I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it's not really a venue that we can, like, have much of a local like right thing you can't yet. just drop you can't, by i have tried can't really, yeah so it's not really well, i mean the, the reason i haven't been there is yeah i would see band uh, shows and it was either like i can't make it they're bigger bands or i can't afford that right now yeah. at that point in life and or i would be like hey i'm in the area i have some time free i'm gonna go check it out private yeah. party private party 
Oh yeah, they just have that on top of their thing, so they're closed. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Like uh, the the last two years or whatever since COVID, Paul, they just opened their doors. Oh yeah, so no, I haven't gone back since. So um, I have yeah, to, I have to go great, see a show and do a review. It's a great, it's a great venue. And I mean, there's there's just sadly not like they're not a venue that you can have a local. Like there's not much well, of a, locals like local spots. Um, you know what I mean. I. Yeah. Like, how's not going to get showcased in there? I always liked Bunkhouse. Yeah. I always felt like Bunkhouse was really cool. Oh, Bunk- I miss Bunkhouse yeah. Saloon more than I miss certain yeah. family members. It, it just, know, like, I really... I like this, like, yeah. anywhere where this sounds, when, where, when, like, I'm playing and it sounds, like, yeah. really good, that's, like, some places are cool spots, but, like... Oh, the best, yeah, think about... But the sound doesn't, like, the way that I sound, I don't think, I've never, like... Bunkhouse had great sound inside, but it sounded even better outside. Yeah, it's not bad outside <laughs> when you're just sitting there and yeah. you don't really want to be in um, there. I, yeah. I experienced Bunkhouse in three of its four incarnations that I remember. Oh, okay. yeah. And I was there for the listening tree. You ever see the listening tree? No, no, no. You know that big tree in the back? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they had, had like headphones and with a different... Yeah, it yeah. was a great... I mean, the bunkhouse was way different, like, way back. Yeah, where yeah, they yeah, had, yeah. like, the couches and everything in there. And, and then they, they like... really made a go of it and then COVID. Yeah. Thanks, COVID. But, uh, oh, all right. Yeah, that was a bummer. So, moving on. Yeah. We're going to move um, <laughs> No, sure. moving on from, from favorite venue. I wanted to talk about gear. Now, you're, okay. not, you're not a drummer, so it won't take an hour. But Okay. Well, my stepdad, uh, I mean, except for my acoustic guitar, which is a piece of garbage, which I got. Uh-uh. Which is, that piece of, that piece of well, garbage. It only plays that way because my stepdad builds guitars. So, like, when I play... With a band band, I use a band my stepdad's band. guitars, and he actually custom built the amp that I use. When you play play with a band band? With a band band, when I play play? Play music music? Yeah, when I play the music music. Went to the mall? Yeah. Like, no, I'm, my stepdad, he's crazy, and they, I'm like, I have like the perfect guitar for me, and it's it's kind of like a... Like not the a, one you're going to play tonight. No, 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 no. <laughs> No. You brought the crap for this. That thing, yeah, this isn't it. That, but the like you're gonna is, see. You're gonna see. This is like a big stickers, like orange. It's so. You're gonna it see sounds so covered, good. Covered in stickers. The Cut. stickers help with the, the resonance. Yeah, yeah the, but it actually suits what you do solo very well. Yeah. Well, he sets it up. He sets it up so it's like it sounds so. It shouldn't sound the way it sounds. Like right. my stepdad's. He's really great. So, so I mean, like, okay, when you go to a show with the Robert Stokes band, yeah, what are you rocking? Yeah. Like, gear wise? Yeah, yeah. Gear-wise. Well, just I have that guitar, and then I have a backup. Well, hamburger. brand wise, like it's it, called it, Hamburg guitar. So he he is Hamburg guitar. Yeah, he custom builds. He built like was he German? He built well. His yeah, his his his, uh, his father was you know the oh, part Lord. of the Holocaust. Actually, crazy. Whoa. Yeah, he's Jewish. You know, these rebels ain't gonna slaughter themselves. You know, Greg. Do you ever think we're the bad guys? Are you taking new medication? No worries. Let's yeah. dig into that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, his, his name is Bernie Hamburger. And he's built, like, guitars. No, no, no relation to the, the comestible. He built three guitars for George Harrison, actually. Like, wow. He built guitars for Mike Campbell. When I was, like, in fifth grade, I'm backstage at heart. And nice. he's playing all his guitars. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. So, so I've met, like, Tom Petty and weird things like that. Like, I've been... I have a weird Tom Petty story that yeah. may or may not be Tom Petty. Okay. Way back when the internet was in its infancy. And you Whoa. Get it. Whoa. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Way back. This... You got a goat? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Come here, you bad boy. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, All right. Uh, Aladdin? Genie? Anybody? Um, so, this is got to be oh, gosh. 92, okay. well, like early, early 90s, okay? Yeah. Like, I'm going to the library to use the internet, kind of. Early, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, right. and and no cell. What's a cell phone? You know, yeah, or no. or if I if I was lucky, I had a ninety two. No, yeah. of course, yeah. Um, and was even going on I was I was learning right? I was learning how to just design websites. Okay, as you know, but like yeah. I can still hand code. Okay, if yeah. I have to, I, I don't right. anymore because why would you? But um, yeah, yeah, like I'm learning how to you know make websites, web pages, and I for some reason I don't remember why. Put up a site with poetry that I wrote, which would have, you know, sometimes uh, become lyrics. Yeah. Uh, all of Jim Morrison. And I, I got a message. I don't remember how I got this message. Uh, but it was like, Tom and the dog are out for a walk, but really loved your 
blah 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 poem. Uh, and, and I thought, I, if I remember right, this is you know decades. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was signed Laura Petty. Yeah. Right. Wasn't Tom's wife named Laura? You got me. Because and that was the thing. I was, <laughs> and I'm looking at it going like, not, can't be, can't be. I'm not super. I mean, why would you know? What yeah. can't be? And I never followed up on it. But it that's my in, in, you know, in my heart of hearts. Like I kind of want Tom yeah. Petty like my poem. Hey, <laughs> fair. Fair. just keep it. Keep it forever. The problem, you know, I don't have a record of it or anything. Yeah. But yeah, no. that was weird. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, well, what was I, what was my question? It was uh it was what kind of gear I'm using. Yeah, so basically Hamburg. So guitar. Holocaust guitars. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You should tell him, hey, have you ever thought about building like death metal guitars? Oh, he's built some it, he's built like, some horrible it, it, looking guitars. So. As a side project, right. consider calling it No, 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 don't don't no. do that. No. That's how no. yeah, that's how you get canceled. No, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to room six. Now cancelled forever. <laughs> <laughs> Not I, my fault. Uh, I was just here. I was just talking. Future Josh is gonna have fun yeah. with that. It's, yeah. be, I'm He's gonna, gonna have to cut things out of his own interview. Oh no! <laughs> I'm just gonna find a juicy meme. Yeah. Get those dank memes. Anyway, you know? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, so okay. my stepdad builds everything that I use. And uh, do you use any pedals when you're with the band? Nothing crazy. Because like, I haven't seen you use a pedal. So uh, I use a distortion pedal, which is just like an Ibanez green one. That for what? Um, Solos? No, well, in the band, man. Yeah, in the band. Yeah, no, we have. I use the distortion pedal a lot. I have a delay that's. Okay, uh, I see that. It's just. Uh, I barely use it, though. You have the tuner pedal? I'm going to have a tuner pedal. Boss? The white one? No, no, no. Oh. It's like a little small one. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like, you know, one of those. Right on. Well, I saw um, the guitar he brought tonight, the uh, crappy one. The crap over. <laughs> has a little clip on tuner, right? Yeah, I just had that because I was. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, acoustic. Yeah. I still have a tuning fork. <laughs> hey, look. Set to E. Yeah, yeah no. There you go. Look there were years. That. There were years I was going to open mics and trying, and I'm sitting there listening, trying to listen yeah. while people are playing, and just trying to get that E and then figuring it from there or in a hallway somewhere. Yeah, no. Because I, I couldn't afford the, the, the tuner pedal. No, that's okay. Getting yeah. that tuner pedal, I was like, tuner pedal. This is amazing. It's so easy. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that I don't bring to anywhere that's loud because it, it, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Know, it, it it, it, those it. little clip ons are. Yeah, they're horrible. Sensitive. They're garbage. Um, so. All right, so we talked about gear. And I want to talk. Uh, have you ever lost gear? Ever had that heartache? Like you left uh-huh. something somewhere or something? I definitely broke. leave XLRs and. And put you're the guy. Remember, remind me to follow you on stage, <laughs> man, dude. I don't know. I lose yeah. that type of stuff a lot. I lost like, guitar. Right? I just played yeah. at a Container Park, and I I have a, like a four guitar stand, which doesn't really make sense because I only bring. That's two. you. And I put it over, <laughs> and I just put it on. I put it next to a black fence, and this thing's like a black oh, guitar no. thing. I see. And I drove home. home, and I was like, I went it to go look for it. And it wasn't in. there, and then I was like, ah. Did you get it back? I did drive back up and got it. Okay, good. <laughs> That's good. But I left like two XLRs at the double down. Yeah. I I just it, it doesn't. I lost uh I lost I think I think it was an XLR and a mic stand after a band a band broke up. Yeah. Oh, I that well. It it was my rehearsal room. We don't need to go into that. It was my rehearsal room though. Part of it because like, I do have a painful story of someone getting Ooh, rid of my. Do tell. Okay, well, basically, I was in a band. Yes. We broke up, and he, uh, I had a, a Behringer, like, so, self-powered, you know, like, PA head, a basically. powered speaker. That's like right, 300 right. bucks. And I had it over there, and when we broke up, he's like, come pick your stuff up. And I was like, all right, I'll come, I'm going to come over right now and get it, because it's expensive. It's, it's, yeah, screw, and then he said, the XLR, I'm, I'm going to call the cops <laughs> if you come over here. What? And so I didn't come over because he was going to call the cops on me. I don't know. But he told you to come over. He did tell me to come pick up my stuff, but then said that. And then he said he left it outside. I was like, but you said you were going to call the police on me. It doesn't matter. Was it in a box to the left? So whatever is going on, if anybody has a, <clears throat> found a Behringer speaker on oh, the God. side of the road, you can just give it back to me. <laughs> so That's... I guess in a sense I did lose gear did... in that. Ugh. It's okay. Bands are what they are. You know what I mean? 
There's a reason they call it a breakup when your band breaks up. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. it's traumatic. You know what I mean? Um, all right. Yeah. So from the lows of losing gear to the highs of dream gear. Is there any dream gear you're lusting after? you have any Wayne's World Someday You'll Be Mine moments? No, not really. There's Cause, nothing? Because my stepdad's Because you can literally have a guitar that. built. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. And I never, you know, my whole life, I never had any of them. Right. And, um. My, I never played them. It wasn't like me and... So you don't want... It wasn't like I was like, oh, hey, I got home. I'm going to play your guitar stuff, Dad. He was like, I was never allowed to touch them. They yeah. were just in another room. I never even thought about them. My brother paid my stepdad, like, years and years ago, to build me one. He just basically did the neck, and then it was like a, everything else was purchased. But the neck's so nice, you know? And then uh, I was over there... And they put the guitar in front of me, and they're like, this is yours. And I was like, what? Yeah. And then they opened it. I was like, yeah, that's a cool guitar. They're like, it's yours. I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't, did you open it? No, it's not. No, I didn't. It took seriously like about 45 minutes for me to realize it was mine. And then they picked it up, and then like on the back, it's like, to Robert. Oh. And I was like, what? Well, that's the one you played with the band? No, it's, it was like a white guitar. Where's that one? And that's, it sadly, it's kind of become, because now that I've, is that your show pony that you don't take? No, show my, my, like, uh, when uh, my stepdad got, he's been building, like, too many guitars. Uh. And he's been getting rid of them. And when that started to happen, I was like, well, I want to buy, I want to buy one, you know. And so I bought one from him that I, that I like, you know. And he didn't want to sell me this orange one that's, like, my favorite guitar now. And then when I paid that one off, he was like, I was there. I was like, all right, I paid that off because I'm just giving him like a hundred bucks here and there. Like, right, right, right. So yeah. I was like, I paid that one Installments. off. I want to do another one. And then I think since I paid that guitar off, he was like, all right, I'm going to let it just sits. At, no one, I don't play it. And I was like, all right. This and is the, the one you, this is the orange there. one. Okay. And uh, so I bought that one and now I'm buying like another one. Like, so I don't really, like, my dream gear, I already have it. Like, right. I know, I, so you there's, know. there's no, like, dream amp or, or anything mm, like that? No, there's nothing. Yeah. I mean. You basically play through the system, house system, or? What's that? You play through the house system usually? Like? I have a, I have an amp that he built. That he, he built amps, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Shut up. So, yeah. That's a. Uh, Bernie Hamburger. And he does really good right guitar repair and really cheap. So. Wow. Right on. Uh, okay, cool. Sounds like you're set. Sorted for uh, gear. Any, you know, do you are you particular about your picks or your strings or? I use uh, the uh, yellow Dunlop picks. The yellow. That's uh, those are they're like point seven thin, right? The point seven three. I think I got one of those thick. upstairs. Yeah. Oh, the thick. Ones. They're thicker than the orange ones. So. You know, okay, like, I'm thinking of a different one. Yeah, these are thick. They're like uh, a good because, guitarist. He has one in his pocket. Yeah, <laughs> because if you're doing Scott like the sky like I do. It's when I do a lot more downstrokes than I do upstrokes, right. which is maybe not the way that you're supposed to do stuff, but I do that. Now. There's there's no wrong way to do stuff. I do the downstrokes. In my day. <laughs> and I do full chords, so I don't I don't really do many of this, like, high. That's why I, I like that one song of yours with the, the <laughs> Oh, with the bomb? With the bomb, you know. Oh, okay. You'll see. Um, <laughs> all right. Moving on. Yeah. So, we're, we're almost done, actually. Right. Two more questions. Right. Number one, I want to talk about what's uh, next on the horizon for Robert Stokes or the Ro- her Robert Stokes band? Uh, or... We're recording the Robert Stokes band. Um, we have all the drums tracked for like 12 songs. That's the hardest part. Yeah, so I just have to, we have to do that. Default Valentine is so busy. We play so much. Well, covers in this town, you know. Yeah, for sure. Good. We yeah. do like about 10 Originals yeah. in that. Now, are you doing but like you're the entertainment we're doing, tonight, or are you? Yeah, like, we're doing like four hour sets most of the time. Or three hour night, sets. Yeah. So it's it's very like everything's a ska reggae twist, right? Um, now, are you doing like like forty five minutes on, fifteen break? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like we're playing at like the Hilton Pool. I have this like horrible like. Eesh. I have this sunburn. I thought I had to put a hot plate on my thing, and then I was at work. Like, it took me all day to realize it was a sunburn. <laughs> Because I, no, it doesn't hurt, hurt, hurt at all. But it was because I was holding my guitar, and I don't the think the reason put, I did that is because you were touching it. I don't think I put sunscreen on here very good. But yeah, yeah we're playing like enough. the Hilton Grand Vacation Pool, Ooh. doing like four hour sets there. My, we're playing, we're playing yeah. everywhere. No. I mean, we're playing Friday. We play, we play like when I was singer for, for Revolving Door, we yeah. uh, would do the four hour shows. Yeah. Do you have the same thing where like that 
third break where you the third break where you suddenly are like I gotta load all this crap up when we go home. Like, yeah, like well, the high of performing suddenly washes. Yeah, up. I mean, we're doing a lot. I mean, it was crazy because, like, uh, I don't, this is all time stamp. But about like two weeks ago, we played at the pool, and then we had an hour turnover to go play at the, a place called Horse Trailer Hideout. So we like had to break down our whole PA system, oh, go geez. over there. It was crazy. Yeah. And then we did two four-hour sets in one day, and then the next day we did four-hour sets. So default Valentine is like. Is almost like consuming all of my time because we're that's the day playing, job basically. We're playing so much and it's really good. I mean, it's the girl that sings with me is like Brit. Yeah, yeah, she's a phenomenal singer, and the way that we sing together, and I just think, yeah, it's really great. And then uh, the Robert Stills fan, of course, I think is like is the the thing that I can finally release something and have it. Right. For people to actually listen to. Well, you know, if you want, yeah. if you want a review, just let me know. Yeah, well, it Thank should you. be coming out soon. Like, yeah. we should be. I need to record guitar and vocals. We still need to lay down a lot. So, um, well, make sure you subscribe so you won't miss in the future when I hopefully will review that. Okay. Yeah. Send it to me. Give me the yeah. artwork, and I'll get you a review video. Yeah. Right? Review the. Board. I'll say it sucked. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, that's okay. No, I wait to not suck. I would never. I would say, hey, don't steal my line. Hey, what? Way to not suck. Maybe that's my new tagline when I sign off on videos. I think that should be your next shirt. Way, <laughs> way, to, not, way to not suck. On the front it says don't suck and on the back it says way yeah. to not suck. Yeah, thumbs up. totally. You got, you just, I don't know why that's not your shirt. Did but. you remember to suck today? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not that. Maybe not that. Maybe not that. That's, that's a whole other... That sounds a little rough. That sounds like an edit. No. You know? No, okay. screw that. Okay. Screw... Censorship! Oh, I'm just take, kidding. Take it. <laughs> So take it back. All right. So, yeah. uh, last question. You made it. Yeah. Okay, I did it. Are you ready? I think I'm ready. Okay. My social media tags. I'm just saying. Let's pretend we're talking to Little Robert. Okay, Little Robert. Yes, we Robert. Here's the deal. I asked this question at the end of most interviews because it, it's kind of an insight into <clears throat> what is it that sort of shaped you and, and everything. But here's the deal. Don't say change your strings. What is one piece of advice you wish someone had given you before you started making music and thinking about like trying to actually you know, be in, in the music business? Um, this camera, this camera, or this hey, camera. Uh, that doesn't sound. I'm I'm the worst person for advice. All right. The, <laughs> the reality is is that I don't play music to become anything. <clears throat> I play music because it's just part of me. You know what I mean? Like so, I don't care where. I don't think about being bigger or being anything. I just like to do it. Like. It's like why I'll, I, for the last few years, I've made about 200 plus songs a year and I put them out there and sometimes I only get like two views, but it's like, it's, they're all songs, they're all things. So it's like, I say, don't let anybody stop you from creating. Don't let like some, don't let the disappointment that nobody looked at it and some kind of like, the thing that I do is I always keep moving. Like, and I never stop for anything. And I don't care what anybody has to say or thinks about my music because that's the only thing I know how to do. That you know? is exactly my, the way I look at YouTube. Yeah. And, and just all my creative endeavors is if I stop, it like, don't, never read the comments. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. I, if I stop and think about the outlay of time and energy and, and effort and love and all that right. I put into it versus... What am I getting back? Right. What I'm getting back is I get love from the scene. Right. And I, and and for a lot of people, I'm their first interview or I'm yeah. their first review, and that's an that's something yeah, I don't take. Yeah, life. yeah, exactly. So if you were to think like, oh, this only got 15 views, right? But the the exchange and the thing that you, your energy didn't go towards nothing, like, right? And I think a lot of people have a hard time when they create something. And they see it flop. Mm -hmm. And then they think it's not good. But they just don't understand that it's like, no, it's really good. Just you have to keep going. Like, don't let that be exactly. Like, and, and don't be afraid to look at your old yeah. stuff. Because let me tell you, that first year of YouTube was cringe. Yeah, and and that's fair. like even just know. the thumbnails. I'm looking at yeah. them going, oh, good God. But yeah. again, you got to start somewhere. And it, yeah. more importantly, I have to, I, I step back often and be like, it's not that bad, yeah. and it 
I'm excited that I'm at where I'm at now. Yeah, you're not going to get better yeah. unless you... If I started where I'm at now and I ended up yeah. where then then I would feel like, what am I doing wrong? But, yeah, so that yeah. advice he gave, yeah. double it. Um, it you, you, you hear it all the time, do what you love and the money will follow. No, do what you love and the passion will follow. Yeah, the energy. The thing that, the thing that you're trying to fill... Right. What, what like like what, like a, someone who's rich who can get anything? There's yeah. something in them that's not. If they're not satisfying what they actually are, like you know, I mean, we're all have our own idea. Like my idea is like, if I don't create music and I don't focus on that, I'm neglecting myself. Yes. Like so, like it. it if I'm focused more on getting some someone to pay attention to me mm -hmm. instead of me just realizing that I just need to pay attention to myself. Right. It's self-love. You know what I mean? The music is a self yep. exploration and everything. I to, I actually took the day off from work today um, and uh, for a couple of different reasons. But, and, and part of that, a lot of my <clears throat> job, for lack of a better word, with doing the, the channel is watching progress bars. You know, I, I, I do some editing, and you know this, yeah. render, or, you know, save, yeah. because now i got to load it into another fo uh, program and, and do color correction or do whatever, yeah. and then when that's done, save, and then, move. you know, it, it, I have a lot of that time that I could be just sitting there staring, and what I did today was something I haven't done in a long time. I just grabbed a bunch of cover songs, she, you know, uh, yeah. chords and lyrics, went to another room, because my wife works in room six as well for her, date, her uh, job. And I just, just played, put, put on TV for background noise, yeah, yeah, and I sure. just, on the one hand, I was efficient, and I used my time wisely while I was waiting on progress bars, but it's like, I did some laundry, I did some dishes, I played, and I did what I wanted, as yeah. opposed to just feeling like, oh, this is my other job, yeah. click. Oh, no, for sure. Click. I think that's the, you know what I mean, like, yeah. I don't know, I don't see a, for me, I don't ever try and put yeah. like a. Right. I do put a lot of, like, weird, like, uh, you know, the thing that was the best thing for me was to make it weird not to create. Yeah. Like, I made it, like, weird. Like, my mom will call me and be like, hey, you haven't posted anything in, like, a few, like, a few <laughs> Wow. Days. Like, shout well, out mom. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, because it was, it was kind of like a true thing where I was, like, I would get sidetracked and not, like, maybe I would be depressed or I would be, like, yeah. in a state where I didn't know how to create. That's the and thing about like, creative people. And there's a lot of, a lot of you don't know you're creative. Like, you just got to find the thing that you like to do. But I know if I wasn't doing YouTube, it'd be something else. I'd be out playing in bars till two in the morning or I'd be, you know, maybe I'd be doing what I do for you, YouTube, but like, that's the job. Yeah. In which case, maybe I'd hate it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, just, you know, like part of me is excited because Default Valentine is getting to a point where yeah. I feel like we can do this for possibly a living. Like, right. It's really weird. So, um, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's, the, the trick but it's not, but it is like, you have to just yeah. do, keep doing what you do. To one day you get, you start to get recognized for it. I don't know. I feel like I'm finally getting recognized. Same. In a big way, like for yeah, what I do. Some things and, are happening and, and I'm excited. Uh, at time of recording, I'm actually going on a uh, humble brag. <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> at, at time of recording, uh, by the time this comes out, it will already have happened when you're watching this, but hopefully you've subscribed and you'll know. Uh, I'm going to go on Vegas Live with Ninon, which uh, she basically interviews a lot of Las Vegas entertainment type people, and okay, they reached yeah. out to me. Yeah. I'm like, really? My podunk little YouTube channel? Yeah. You want to talk to me? You have literally 10 times as many subscribers? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go do that tomorrow. I'm going to hang out in the cantina. Yeah. And have some tacos and uh, right, uh, right. And, and do and that's where they do it. Yeah. And but things like that are starting to happen where it's not necessarily translating into dollars, but it's translating into I feel I feel seen, I feel validated. Yeah, it's recognition. Yeah. It's the it's the same thing where I I've played, you know, and for like a brief like little period, I got a little tired of like yeah being the opener and being because I play acoustic and I'm always. First, and I got this kind of like, I kind of started to want these bigger things. And it was like a weird right. time that I kind of came out of. And I'm really happy. Like, don't get yourself trapped in 
thinking that you, you know what I mean? like right. don't think about what you might deserve or where you're where you think you should be. It's like you know I I had to like re humble myself because I was yeah. like you know. Well, with that. Now he doesn't have to be humble. He's going to go upstairs and he's going to play some amazing music. Maybe sing. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just no stick around. You're going to see Robert Stokes in his element in room six. Um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll see you upstairs. I guess temporarily say goodbye. All right. See ya. Bye. I can't do this with walking downstairs. I bottled up all of my feelings Now they're coming into the light All these hidden feelings That I haven't shared with you And they sound just as stupid as I thought they might come now, and you're so confused, you don't care what I'm going on about. All these bottom the feet. I've struggled to let you know If I could only talk about them earlier Instead of them all coming out at once And they sound just as stupid As I thought they might come And you're so confused You don't care what I'm going on about but I'm going on about I'm going on about I'm going on How hard it's gonna be Though she threw herself towards me I couldn't meet her Halfway But one day I'll find her And build my home One day I'll find her And I'll build my whole world around her, yeah Truth is it's just something I'm no good at Seems easy but it's so damn hard to give that love back I let questions stand in my way it's no surprise, no, I'm still alone today. But 
one day I'll find her and build my home. One day I'll find her And I'll build my whole world around her Remember the first time I said it's you I love, you I love. If there were days that I could go back to, one of those days would be the day that I told you when love was so easy. When love was so easy When love was so easy When love was so easy Now I'm in my late thirties Soon they're coming to an end Seems so strange, love was so easy to come across All those years ago, yeah When love was so easy 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 Remember the first time I said it's you I love You I love If there were days that I could go back to One of those days would be the day that I told you when love was so easy When love was so easy When love was so easy When love was so easy, easy. I fell so hard No cue that's 
what I should have done. I need to find a way out and put my heart back where it was before. Face that reality. No trips around the sun together will there ever be. Face that reality. No trips around the sun together will there ever be. Should have kept this to myself. Should have went and told anybody else. A love that never started is gone. Nothing is all I'm holding on to. Face that reality. No trips around the sun together will there ever be. Face that reality. No trips around the sun together will there ever be. Now is all of this just starts to fade. Now learn to go my separate way. Hope that when my life light grows dim, I'm not laying there thinking about you and how good it could have been. Face that reality. No trips around the sun together will there ever be. Face that reality. No trees around the sun together will there ever be. No trees around the sun together will there ever be. No trees around the sun together. Well, there's never, there's never gonna be. No, there's never gonna be. Trips around the sun. No, there's never gonna be. No trips around the sun together. There's so much I plan to do Bring your pretty flowers when you feel me And I'll say those flowers are pretty, aren't they? But they'll never be as pretty as you Make these plans pull Cause it's not up to me No, it's up to you, yeah Cause I already, already do Love you Love you Love you, yeah Love you Yeah, I already do Love you Plan to make you my wife, devoting you the rest of my life. We'll have our ups, we'll have our downs, 
But you're giving your love, I promise to stay with you. Make these plans for you. Cause it's not up to me. No, it's up to you, yeah. Cause I already, already do love you. Love you. Love you. Yeah. Love you. Yeah, I already do love you. Make these plans pull through Cause it's not up to me Now it's up to you, yeah Cause I already, already do Love you Love you Love you, yeah Love I already do love you. How can it not be love when we smile like we do? We stumble over words, don't know which ones to choose. And the way you looked at me, it's the way I looked at you. I'm sorry if I disappear or if I'm acting. But if we could take it slow, I'd like to get to know everything about you. How can this not be love? Don't say it isn't true. Don't tell me what I'm feeling that you don't feel it too. Cause the energy is there When we are side by side Though I know I'm scared Yeah, I know we've got to try But if we could Take it slow I'd like to get to know Everything about you How can this not be love when we smile like we do? I wanna smile like we do. Come on, baby, let me be with you. I want to thank Robert Stokes for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to check out more from him, I've got links down in the description. Uh, also. Keep, uh, you know, subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for this page because eventually, hopefully, the uh, Homegrown Songwriter Showcase is going to come back and maybe he'll perform again. Uh, more than likely. More yeah. than likely. <laughs> In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, 
hit me up using my email or my social media link down there. There's also ways on that social media link that you can support the channel, such as Room 6. I got new merch. Did you remember to rock today? I also have, did you remember to be awesome? And did you remember to be amazing? Because like I always say, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Before that, though, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you'd like to subscribe, it would really mean the world to me, please click down there. Don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye. Hey, see ya. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.